Kia ora everyone, my name's Zach. I love rugby. Welcome back to Hunker Time Rugby. And welcome to my Six Nations Prediction video. Okay guys, I've gone through each of the teams and given you my preview where I've looked at the teams, the structure, the makeup. I've looked at some of the relevant factors and keys to success for each of the teams. If you haven't seen those, go back and watch them now. I'll put links to those videos in the description box below. Next thing I want to say, guys, is it is, it is very, very difficult at this stage of the tournament to make an accurate prediction. All we've done is judge it based on what we see on paper, obviously the team selections, um, what we know about the teams in terms of their um, performances last year, and what we're expecting them to implement um, this year. But there are new coaches, there are new players, there are new captains. There are so many unknowns that really we won't get that accurate view until the tournament progresses somewhat. So this is just a, a high level prediction based on the information that we have today. Um, it also means that I could be wrong without a doubt. So please don't get too hung up on my prediction. Um, understand that every team here um, has quite a good chance of winning games and three or four of these teams have a really, really good chance of winning the tournament overall. So with that said, guys, I'm gonna go through my prediction right now. Okay, the first thing we need to do, guys, is organize these teams into what I would define as top tier and bottom tier. Um, and to me, the top tier is those teams that we could presumably see going on to win this tournament. So let's start with the bottom tier, guys, um, and let's start with Italy. Unfortunately, I haven't seen enough changes um, from a squad selection perspective. Obviously, there is a new captain coming in, but it just doesn't seem like there is enough change going on in Italian rugby to justify them moving out of the lower tier here of these teams. Um, you know, they've, they've been perennial struggle, strugglers here in the Six Nations, and I don't see any evidence that that will change, which is really unfortunate because during the World Cup, you know, I, I watched all of their games and they certainly had some great attacking capability and some great um, attacking skill there. Um, what Italian fans can look forward to, though, is obviously Sergio Parisa is retiring, so he's doing a bit of a farewell tour there in Italy. And it's worth um, obviously getting behind him as part of his farewell tour and seeing him off the right way. He's obviously gone down as one of the top three most capped players here in international rugby and deserves a proper send-off. So that's something to look forward to, I guess, for the Six Nations. The next team I want to talk about is Scotland. Um, Scotland is a team that if they have their full complement of players on the track, then they can be competitive against each of these teams. Unfortunately, the loss of Finn Russell and Darcy Graham, in my mind, is a significant loss. And it's going to be difficult for them to overcome that, as well as we, if we look at the draw. It's going to be very difficult for the Scottish team um, to do enough to be competitive in this tournament. Now, they should certainly get a win against Italy. And in my view, if they do that, that is par for the course. Um, but if they can pick up a win against someone like uh, France, for example, who are going through major change, that would constitute a very, very successful Six Nations. Not only that, but for Scottish fans, you know, I'm really interested in seeing how Adam Hastings goes. He, he'll likely be the number one um, uh, first five here with Finn Russell out, and he is a great talent. He's someone that you could really build a team around if he was to evolve further and get better. So he is one player to look out for. Um, he may take Scotland in a direction that is more suited to, uh, to winning rugby as well. So I like his style of play. Um, he's a very, very good up and coming player and he's one player that I'll be watching in particular. But unfortunately, it just feels like with that lack of those big guns of Finn Russell and Darcy Graham, it does look like it's gonna be a difficult year here for, um, for Scotland. Now we look at two teams that we can definitely put into the top tier of this tournament. First one I'll talk about is England. So obviously they come into this tournament as favorites. And I think that's justified based on the year that they had in 2019. Their performance against the All, All Blacks was fantastic. Obviously, they were defeated finalists there. Um, and from a personnel perspective, they really look like they're starting to build a very settled team. Eddie Jones as well. I think the Eddie Jones factor is a big one in this tournament. Um, he is you know, the master of mind games against experienced coaches. There's a number of very inexperienced coaches in this tournament. And I'm expecting Eddie to be on his best form as he looks to pick apart uh, both mentally, some of these coaches, as well as some of these teams. So I think that's going to just add a little bit of spice to the Six Nations, the way that Eddie Jones will approach the um, uh, the press conferences. He already threw some shots at Wayne Pivak, where he was talking about Gatlin's Gate and how Wayne Pivak has to uh, has to pass through Gatlin's Gate and get a bit of a reminder <laughs> of everything that Warren Gatlin has done um, in his 12 years there. But 
Certainly, I expect Eddie to be on fine form, and it's hard to look past England as well, given the draw. Um, they play both Ireland and Wales at home, and that's going to be a huge, huge advantage for them. The next team that I want to talk about is Wales. Now, Wales, they had a fantastic 2019. I mentioned that in my preview video. But also, I think they are better than, they, than their performance in the Rugby World Cup as well. Obviously, they struggled there against France, but got home. They seem to be winning games ugly, which is a sign of a great team. Um, the semi-final, they were unfortunate, but very, very competitive there. And what I see now is their squad has improved with the inclusion of, um, you know, some of these young guys, Luis Rees-Samet, Nick Tompkins, but also guys like Falatau returning, Reese Webb. You know, there's a great mix here of youth and experience, and I think they've got the personnel to go on and win this. I actually think they've got the best squad in the Six Nations tournament, if I'm to put my cards on the table. Their most difficult part of their, um, their, their campaign will be overcoming two away games to Ireland and to England. But I certainly put them in here as contenders for this title. Then we look at the next two teams. So Ireland, they are definitely better than their performance in 2019 without a doubt. Obviously Grand Slam winners in 2018, um, but last year they just really struggled to pull it all together. And I think part of that is, I do think Joe Schmidt in that World Cup year um, in his final year, it seems as if the coach for the coaching staff, that pressure might have just got a little bit too much for them. You know, some of the players, when they did their review at the end of last year, post that World Cup, spoke openly that, you know, there were um, uncharacteristic changes during the week where new strategies would be, um, would, you know, they'd be devising new strategies a day before the game or on the day. Selections were, um, were not being bettered down fast enough. Rory Best comes out and speaks very candidly. And I think in moments like this, you know, people sort of looked at that and thought, well, you know, it's a bit poor form that Rory Best is speaking so poorly about Ireland, um, you know, after a terrible campaign. But I actually think, you know, being candid in those situations is the best thing you can do um, for your team. And it showed more character and it also showed, um, obviously, that, you know, he's a servant of Irish rugby to give fair and honest criticism at the end of that campaign. But all of that just gives us signs that maybe the pressure was just a little bit too much for Irish rugby, particularly from the coaching staff end, and that filtered down to the players and filtered down to performance on the field, unfortunately. Now, with Andy Farrell coming in, a number of changes in this team, and with some young players coming forward, I think this, better, this team is better than 2019 results. And I'm expecting them to go pretty well here, and they're certainly in that top tier of teams, in my opinion. Next, we look at France. Now, France could do absolutely anything in this tournament. I spoke about in my preview Obviously, um, uh, 19 new caps, new captain who has only had 11 caps to his name, young guy. Um, you know, it's a real sign to the future. Fabian Gaultier has come in, and I think, you know, his selection as head coach here is a masterstroke. And his intentions are crystal clear. He is developing a team that can be competitive in the 2023 World Cup. And when I look at this team on paper right now, they have all the hallmarks of guys that have so much promise and could go on to be mainstays in French rugby and a successful team for a long, sustained period. And I do think that Gaultier will galvanise this team and get both the rugby public in behind what he is trying to achieve, as well as the players. And for you know, a French rugby coach to be able to do that is a huge advantage. For that reason, I definitely put France into the top tier here. They could do anything, as I mentioned. They could lose to Scotland, or they could go on and win the whole tournament. Um, and, and their draw is reasonably favourable here as well. So I do think, all things considered, um, given the Gaultier factor, factor um, Sean Edwards has come in to shore, in that shore up that defence as well. So I'm expecting that this team will be better um, than, certainly than they performed last year. The only other thing I'll say is that a lot of pundits are coming out and you know expecting that France will go very, very well in this tournament. You know, almost putting them to the... Um, uh, to second favourite tags, uh, which I think is very, very interesting. I'll cover off my thoughts in a bit. But ultimately, I do think that those are the top four teams. It's England, Wales, Ireland, France. And unfortunately, in the bottom tier, we've got Scotland and we've got Italy. Okay, now we've got four teams that we've defined in the top tier, guys. So the next question is, how can we separate them? Now, I've done the analysis. I've crunched the numbers. I've looked at past results, obviously analysed the younger squads, looked at the coaches and their style and strategy. And I think one of the most relevant factors that will decide the Six Nations and has proven to decide Six Nations in the past is the draw. Hometown factor is huge in Six Nations rugby. And I'm going to take an example here. So I've, I've looked at the, these four teams 
and I've looked at the last five years of fixtures in the Six Nations. And what I found looking at that is a total of 30 games played, 21 of those are won by the home team. 21 games, that's a total of 70% of these games are won by the home team. Eight games have been won away from home, um, and one game was a draw. So a total of 70% there. Significant weight on hometown advantage in this tournament. But taking that and looking at those eight wins, there was something else that was quite startling that came through in the numbers. Of those eight wins, four of them have resulted in the winning team, winning away from home, going on to win the Six Nations. So while it is difficult to win away from home, guys, what we're seeing in the numbers is that teams that do win away from home typically go on to win the Six Nations. So the main question we need to answer in order to land on our final prediction is who can win away from home this year? And to answer that question, guys, we have to go and look at each of the games and work out who we think can win away from home. Is it possible? Can they do it? Will they do it? So a total of six games this, this year between these four teams, guys. Let's talk about England versus France. Can England go to France and win there? My thoughts are yes, they can. They're playing a young French team, 19 changes in the squad. Um, Eddie Jones is preparing for this. I've heard him say that they're going to bring a style of physicality to really disrupt this young French team. Um, and I expect that that will be successful. Uh, Eddie Jones and England are coming on the back of a very, very successful 2019 and have some great players there in a building depth. I do think that the losses of um, Billy Vinopolo, that's quite significant. But ultimately, I do think that they can go there and do the job in France. The next game, can Wales beat Ireland in Ireland? My thoughts on that are yes, they can. Um, of the last five games there in Ireland, Ireland won three, Wales won one, drawn one. So that's a relatively good away, away record um, given how important away matches are in the Six Nations. But ultimately, I look at this Welsh squad and I think they are so well stacked in certain areas that if they get the rotations right, then they can be very, very effective in this um, in this tournament. And I'm expecting that you know they will come here and they will be able to do the job there. Ireland can definitely hold serve at home, but Wales are capable of going there and winning. Can France beat Wales in Wales? My thoughts, the answer is no. I think that it's a step too far for a young French team. Um, I have been surprised at how much support is coming in behind this French team. I understand they're very, very promising, but my thoughts are they're just a maybe one or two years from really starting to hit their strides given the low number of caps, given the inexperience in the team, given the, the new caps that are coming, new coach that are coming, and there are far too many unknowns here. I do expect them to see improving results, but I do think it's going to take them a year or two to really hit their stride. Um, next game, can Ireland beat England in England? I think the answer to that is no. Obviously, teams get up for England in England. Playing at Twickenham is, um, you know, is, a, is a big thing. And also beating England, I think, for a lot of these teams in the Six Nations is a huge thing. But I just feel like there is a bit of a psychological edge here between England and, um, and Ireland. Obviously, that defeat before the, before the Rugby World Cup is part of the build-up, that heavy defeat that Ireland took to, um, to England. It seemed to take out more of the more confidence in preparation for the World Cup than it did help them prepare. And that was a big, you know, big, big issue to go down that heavy before a World Cup impacting confidence. And we know what the results there were uh, for Ireland in the end in that tournament. But um, I do think Eddie Jones will be looking to press his psychological advantage. I did, it did look like, um, you know, physicality was a real issue for this Irish team against England in that game and other games last year. So for me overall, it feels like England should be able to hold serve at home. Then can Wales beat England? This is going to be a huge match, week four of the Six Nations, and I think may come close to defining and deciding who wins this. Can Wales go to England and beat England? The answer is yes, they can. Can England beat um, Wales there in Twickenham? Of course they can. So if you look at it that way, you know, this could come down, the, the whole Six Nations tournament could come down to, to this match and what a match that would be if that was the case. Now, can Ireland go to France and beat France in France? My view, the answer is yes. I do think that this Irish team will get better throughout the tournament. Um, I do think that they've got, as I mentioned, great mix of experience, some great returning players and some good new up-and-comers. Andy Farrell, obviously inexperienced from a head coaching perspective at international level, but let's see how he goes. Let's give him the benefit of doubt for now. Um, but Ireland can certainly go there and win as well as France can um can hold serve there. So we're down to two teams, England versus Wales, <laughs> ultimately to decide the outcome of the Six Nations, and who am I choosing? 
Ultimately, I'm putting my money where my mouth is and putting money on the result of this tournament, and I am going with Wales. I just think the makeup of this squad is extremely good, and we may see the best of Wales coming the next year, um, year and a half. I do think the rotation in their um, loose forward trio, um, you know, obviously the return of Reese Webb, you've just got some fantastic guys in different positions. Liam Williams there, obviously the best fullback in my opinion in Six Nations. Great finishes, good young guys, experienced um, type five. It's just very, very positive here. If Wayne Pivak can pull this all together, and, and they're also better for that additional run that they had against the Barbarians. You know, that meant that Wayne Pivak could get some of the cobwebs out, certainly, um, you know, start working through some of his styles for the big games and how he'll approach it, the coaching stuff um, as well. I do think they are far better for that run, and they come in here with a great opportunity to win. What's crazy to me is that the bookies are offering eight to one, seven dollars now here, in order to win the tournament for Wales. And I think that probably reflects the home and away disadvantage that they have. But I think with this personnel, they can overcome that. And I think that game, England versus Wales week four, is gonna be one of the great games, guys. So hopefully the results go away and that becomes a bit of a um, deciding game for the whole Six Nations. That would be a very, very good watch. If it gets to that, I think I'll do a live stream during the game as well. Might be the way to go. Let's see how we go on that one. But ultimately, that's what I think. I think that Wales are going to come here and sneak a very, very famous Six Nations victory, overturning the difficulties of the draw, showing that they are one of the best teams in the world with their depth um, and their experience in certain positions, and giving some of these younger guys a platform to really shine. That's it from me, guys. I've rambled on long enough. If you've liked this, guys, please hit like. Um, it really, really helps the channel out. And subscribe to the channel as well, because I'm going to be covering all of the results of the Six Nations. Um, we've got team selections coming up. Um, let me know if you'd like me to cover off some of the betting side of things as well, because I will be putting a few bets on during this um, during the Six Nations and happy to share. Uh, I don't condone people do whatever they want with their money, but... You know, I'll, I'll tell you what I'm betting on. Um, that may spark your, your thinking process. But let me know if you're interested in that. Let me know what you think of my prediction. There's a lot of stuff that I've covered here. Um, I like to be quite detailed, those who follow the channel and my analysis. But I will be covering this significantly. So please like, comment down below, subscribe to the channel. But most of all, enjoy the Six Nations, guys. There are so many questions here that we need answered. And we're going to get them all in a few days' time. I'll see you guys back here soon. See you.